Hi and welcome to this practice for yoga for the lower back. This is a practice that's suitable if maybe you've got some, some little niggles eh, in your lower back but if you if you have anything more serious than that then of course please do go and seek a professional opinion from either your, your doctor or a physiotherapist um, but if it's just some some general aches or, or stiffness or a little bit of a tight lower back, then this is a nice little sequence to, to mobilise the area of the lower back and, and strengthen into the muscles of the core. So we're going to begin by coming down to, to lie on our backs. So I just want you to find yourself in the, the middle of your, your mat. Um, we're going to begin with the knees bent, soles of feet flat on the, the floor arms by our side, palms turned up towards the sky. And before we begin to move, we're just going to take a moment to bring our focus and our awareness into our breathing. And we're going to start this practice by focusing on the, the breath, actually, because the breath is incredibly powerful and our breath helps activate our, our core, helps activate the synergy of all these muscles working together. So to begin with, all I'd like you to do is breathe in and out of the nose. And just beginning to know your, just getting to know your breath here. So often, if we are a little bit stressed or if we're, we're not consciously breathing, the breath can be a little bit up here in the chest. And if that's where you're finding the breath just now, that's okay. I just want you to notice in your body where the breath lies when you first come to it. So whether it's in the chest, in the belly, whether it's short or fast. Just take a moment to relax. Relaxing the body. Trying to allow the mind to rest as well. Just take a couple more breaths here. Try to just fully surrender to the moment. Lovely. So I'm going to get you now to bring your hands up onto your rib cage, actually, and try to bring the, the heel, the palm of your hand slightly around the sides and then let your fingers rest over the top of your, your bottom rib there, just around the edge of that rib. So our diaphragm, our main breathing muscle, attaches onto the, these ribs and although we often describe deep breathing as belly breathing and absolutely there is going to be a, a rise and fall in the, the belly, we really want to, to find this movement of the rib cage. Um, as we take a nice deep breath. So we're going to do this first of all by taking a really strong purposeful breath out and for this practice uh, we're actually going to breathe in through the nose and we're going to breathe out through the mouth. So a little bit different than the in and out of what we would normally do um, in a yoga practice. So I want you to take a deep breath in through the nose. As you breathe out through the mouth Feel the belly come down, the abdominal muscles contract and press down lightly but purposefully onto this bottom rib cage. And then as you take a breath in through the nostrils, try to expand the rib cage up into your hand. And then exhaling again through the mouth, purposefully but lightly pressing down on this rib cage and you'll feel the contraction of the abdominal muscles. Inhale into the pressure of the hand. Exhale. So inhale, we are inflating 
into our hands and fingertips. Exhale, just encouraging those ribs down as the belly moves down towards the brain. Let's do that a couple more times. Now on your inhale on the inflate, you should also feel your rib cage grow a little bit wider into the heel of your hands, into the palm of your hands. And then the exhale encourages everything back in. Now, if you're struggling with this a little bit, a really good tip is try to direct the expansion of the breath right into your heart center. I find this encourages the diaphragm breath and that openness and space we create in the rib cage with the inhale and the abdominal contraction, as well as the pelvic floor contraction you may feel as well on the breath out. And just try that a couple more times for me. Fantastic. So then just releasing the arms by your side. So hopefully you can feel there how our breath helps activate, activate our core. So next thing we're going to move into is just some very gentle pelvic tilts. This is a great way just to start to move and stretch the lower back a little bit. So what you may want to do with this is place the fingertips of your hands into the small natural curve of your lower back and everyone's going to have some are going to have a bigger one, others are going to have a naturally slightly flatter one. That's okay. So just find your curve. And then the first thing we're going to do here is curve up. So my bottom is going to stay on the floor. My pelvis rotates forward. This is what we call an anterior tilt of the pelvis rolling forwards over the thigh bones. That creates space underneath the back. And then if I was to do the opposite, tuck the bottom under bringing my lower back down in the direction of the floor. Now, as we perform this, we really want to synchronize it with our breath. So the inhale is the forward tilt of the pelvis, lifting up. The exhale is the down and the abdominal muscles contract on the way down into the earth. Try to relax across the shoulders as you do this, inhaling up. Exhaling down. Do this a few more times with your own breath. You don't need to be in synchronicity with me. It's important that you do this in synchronicity with your own breath pattern. couple more. And do last one. Lovely. And then just relax and you can re release the arms by your side. So you'll notice here, sorry, I forgot to say, I've gone back to more of a yogic style breathing here. So I'm breathing in and out of the nostrils. But if that doesn't feel comfortable for you, if you're not used to breathing like that, you can still breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth eh, if you prefer. So this next little one is what I call a flowing bridge. And um, this is one of my favorite things to do for the spine. Um, we're gonna move up and down into a bridge position, moving with our breath. We're going to do it two ways. We're going to experiment a little bit with the breath um, rising up on both the inhale and the exhale. The important thing to think of here is really the articulation of the spine. 
each segment of the spine, trying to move it individually as we roll up and in particular back down to the earth. Um, and trying to almost imagine that your spine is moving up and down a bit like a snake would move, nice and fluidly. We're trying to build fluidity into the movement of the spine. So first of all, just a little note on the position of the heels. You might want to just move them back slightly depending on where they are. A good position is just to be able to touch, roughly speaking, um, the back of the heels with your hands. An ideal position is ankle underneath the knee. Very flexible people might be able to bring them in a little bit closer, but that can put a little bit of pressure on the knee joint. So a comfortable distance away from the, from the bottom is good. So on this first round, we're going to rise up on the inhale and lower down on the exhale. So we're going to begin with that pelvic tuck. So as we take a breath in, rolling the pelvis under, beginning to press down into the feet, curling up through the spine. And then as we exhale, trying to come down first from the lower, uh, sorry, upper back even, keeping the pelvis tucked to bring the lower back down and then untucking the pelvis to release the bottom down. Inhale to curl under, press down into the feet and rise up. Arms are staying on the floor. Exhale to roll down. Now just keep going here with your breath. One last little point is just the position of the feet. Try to make sure you're not rolling onto the outer edges of the feet or lifting your toes up off the earth. Keep the foot nice and flat. Curling, inhale to rise up. And exhale down. Let's do that one more time. Inhale and lift. Exhale. Good. So now I'm just going to get you to take a little pause here. Enjoy a nice few breaths, just letting the spine relax. we're going to do one more round um, but for interest here we're going to flip the breath around so this time we're going to rise up on the exhale and we're going to lower down on the inhale so as we begin we're going to take a breath in exhale press down into the feet roll the pelvis under and lift inhale same thing pelvis stays tucked Rolling from the upper back, middle back, lower back, trying to bring that down before the back of the hip. And then just move with your breath. Exhale to curl and lift up. Keep the feet grounded. Inhale and down. Exhale to lift. Inhale down. So one other thing you want to be a little bit careful for here is if you're holding your breath at all at any point. You want to try and breathe out all the way through the upward movement. And breathe in all the way through the downward movement so there's no holding of breath at the end. Let's just try that one more time. Exhale. Inhale. Lovely. And breathe out and relax. Fantastic. Give yourself a moment here. We're then going to bring the feet a little bit closer together. Bring the feet and knees together. Just having a nice little sway here of the knees to either side, beginning to loosen that off. Lovely. And bring the knees back to centre. 
bringing the knees then up into our chest. You can just wrap the arms around the shins, have a little walk here. And those that are a bit tight in the area of the lower back often will feel this little rock and roll as a, as a stretch. Um, but there's also no right and wrong here. If you're not feeling it massively, that's okay. It's probably a good thing. Um, and then we're just going to pause in centre here. Taking the hands onto the knees and, and moving the hands just a little bit away from the chest. And using our hands to circle the legs. So this is going to give that area of the lower back now a bit of a massage into the floor. Normally feels quite nice. Also gives the area of the sacroiliac joint. That is where our spine meets our pelvis. Uh, it can be a little bit sensitive in some people, particularly in, in women. Go the other way because it is... A bit susceptible to pregnancies to get injured perhaps if we've had multiple babies lovely and then we're just going to bring the feet back down onto the ground so we're going to do a little bit of hip work here actually because hips and glutes and it's, it's the whole body's kind of connected that we don't work just in individual individual parts so we're going to cross the left leg over the right thigh. So a couple of options in this one. First one is just keep the left hand to the inside of the left knee, pushing that leg away from you. Now for some of us, that's going to feel like it's enough. Those that want to go a little bit deeper can begin to lift this opposite leg off the floor. And the left hand then goes in the gap. The right arm comes around and you're holding behind the back of the right thigh. If you need to lift your head up to get there, that's okay, but then really make sure you're able to put the back of your head and your shoulders back down. I'm able to place my left elbow into that inner thigh, which just pushes that knee a little bit wider as we pull this leg in. So you should be feeling a nice little stretch down deep into that left hip. If it's quite intense, try to, to breathe deeply into it. Now our breath is never down in our hip, but our breath helps just send awareness there. It helps us to, with our awareness, try and encourage our relaxation. But as always, we are breathing with our diaphragm, breathing into our rib cage. One more breath. Love. So we'll let that go. Bring that leg down. And the opposite leg. Straight switch to the other side here. That right ankle is going to cross over the left. So option one is just placing that hand to the inside of the leg and knee, pushing it away from you. Or we can then begin to pick the opposite leg up off the ground. Same thing, thread the needle. Now it's at this point you may well notice that one side is tighter than the other. So this is my tight side. So it always feels a little bit more intense when I, I first come up into it. Okay, so nice smooth breath. Lovely. So then we'll just bring that leg down, bring the other foot down. Good job. You can rock up here if you're able to rock up or we're going to come to set up another option. Is just roll over onto your side, use your hands to sit up and we're going to flip position. So we're going to turn around here onto our hands and knees. I'm going to stay facing this side of my mat. So what we call a tabletop position here, pretty simple. Um, you want to place your hands shoulder width apart and if you can shoulders directly over the top of the wrist knees are a little bit separated underneath the underneath the hips 
So cat cow, this is another spine mobilisation drill. Before we even go into this, what I'd like to do is begin to draw the shoulders back away from your ears. Just find a little bit of length in the neck. Now there's going to be a tendency, probably because you're looking at the screen, that you want to look up like this and tilt the head up. Try to avoid that. Bring the chin down, lengthen into the back of the neck. Point the crown of the head forward. And, and then we're going to move again with our breath through these cat-cow movements. So the first one is cow pose. Cow pose is that forward tilt of the pelvis. It takes the belly down towards the earth. Continue to move those shoulders back away from the ears. So here, if you just stay here for me and breathe, you're going to feel a stretch perhaps into some of these tummy muscles. And then the opposite of this cow pose is our cat pose. So this is the pelvis rolls under, just like our pelvis tilts. We are pushing the earth away from us, lifting the back up towards the sky. Also try to lift up through this lower part of the back and broaden in between the shoulder blades. Head can fully relax here, taking your gaze towards the back of your mat in between your legs. And then if we're to move through this with our breath, our inhale is going to bring us back down to the earth. Our exhale curls and brings us up towards the sky. That same idea of trying to build fluidity into our spine. Fluidly moving our spine like a snake. And really important to move with your breath. So if you're not in time with me, it absolutely does not matter. But the inhale is down. The exhale is up. And do this a couple more times for me. Fantastic. Bring the spine back into centre. And now we're going to come to a wide leg extended child's pose. So I want you to bring your big toes together, separate your knees apart towards the edges of the mat. We're going to set the hips back towards the ankle. Don't worry if they go all the way down. They're going to go wherever they go in your body. And then we're going to stretch those arms forwards, taking the width of the mat. So little pinkies spreading towards the outside. If you're able to here, forehead is going to come down towards the mat. You can relax your arms slightly if you want to bend the elbows a little bit. That's fine. But try to let the weight of your hips sit back. So this version of the pose is, is more comfortable for most people. It gives us a little bit of space between our legs to sit our belly and our chest. And it also stretches into the hips a little bit more. So as you close your eyes here, relax for me. I'd like you to find your awareness of your breath into the back of the body. So as we breathe, it's not just an expansion of the rib cage of the front body. That same expansion of breath happens in the back of the body as well. So as you take a breath in, I want you to feel, if you can, your lower back expand. Feel the back of your rib cage expand. Good, take two more breaths here. Fantastic. We're going to guide ourselves up onto our hands and knees then. Again, bring our knees back into the centre so our knees are underneath our hips. And this time we're going for what I call a puppy dog pose. So it's a kneeling version of our downward dog. So we're going to stay as we are, hips over the top of the knees. Stretch those arms forward again, taking the width of the mat once more. And then as we reach forward through the arms, our head is coming down towards the mat. Now, it can be tempting in this pose, and there is an other versions of this pose where we would do it, to really let the chest 
float down here. And if you're flexible, you may be able to do that. But what I'd like you to think about is maintaining length along the spine. You probably can't see it at this top. But I'm going to ask you to pull your front ribs up into your body slightly. I'm just going to pull my t-shirt down to see if it allows you to see it a little bit more. So we're not letting the heart centre melt down, but we are drawing the front ribs up, engaging a little bit more strength into the abdominal muscles, protecting our shoulders by pressing the palms of the hands down into the mat and rolling the elbows down into the mat. So we have length in the spine from our, our tailbone, from our sit bones, almost as if Everything's been pulled slightly in a different direction. Fantastic. And then we'll slide those hands back just towards the outside of the head, enabling us to press our head up away from the floor. Coming back to our tabletop position rolling the spine up into our cat pose one more time, let the head and neck relax, and then just begin to shift your weight forward and back. And as you shift your weight back, beginning to get a nice little stretch again into that area of the lower back. And if it feels good to do so, you can begin to shift back a little bit more, just listen to your body here. Lovely. Coming back to centre, I'm going to come down to lie down now. Just got a couple more. So coming to lie down on the mat. Our legs are straight behind us, toes pointed back, and our arms extended back with the palms turned down. So this next pose is locust pose. We're going to begin with just a half version. This is a strengthener for the lower back, but actually rather than thinking of this as an exercise for the lower back, I'd like you to think of it as an exercise for the glutes, for the bottom. So as we set ourselves up here, I'm going to get you to bring your forehead to the mat. Now, the reason to do this is just to try to maintain the length into the back of the neck. Because if we have our chin down, we're looking forward, the neck is tilted back. Just want to think of the neck as an extension of the line of the spine. So bring the forehead down. So this first version, the legs are going to stay on the floor. We're going to lift the chest and the upper body away from the ground, but I want you to try and feel this lift coming from your glutes. So reaching back through the arms, reach back through the fingers, palms are turned down. On an inhale, lift from the hips to lift. Now you don't have to come up too high. Some people may be able to come up higher, but you might feel it very much in the lower back. I don't want you to feel it as much here, although it is working. I want you to feel it into the glutes. So keep pointing the top of the head forward. Feeling the lift is from the hips. Drawing the shoulder blades down the spine as you reach back with your fingers. Making sure you're not holding your breath, because that is something that often happens. Breathing in and out of the nose, or in through the nose, out through the mouth. And then lower down we come. And you can just turn your head to one side here. Take a couple of nice big breaths. Again, awareness of the breath expanding and softening into the back of the body. Lovely. Turn your head back to centre, forehead to the mat. We're just going to do that one more time. Again, lower body here is going to stay on the mat. We are lifting from the hips. Inhale. Resist the temptation to come up too high. The muscles of the legs are going to be engaged. Be careful your feet are not hovering off the ground. I want you to keep the top of your big toes, top of your feet connected to the earth.
couple more rib cage breaths. And then down we go. Turn your head to the other side and take a couple of breaths. Bring the head back to centre. Bring the hands in by the side of your chest. We're going to move ourselves back up onto our knees for another child pose here. So now you have an option to go with the first version, which was knees apart, or this time keep the knees together, feet pointing back, set the hips back. You can choose here whether you'd like a little pillow to pop your head on, or if you can get your head on the mat, your arms can rest by your side. Now this is more of a stretch and a curve of the spine because of the position of our legs being together. Just try to fully relax, close your eyes. You'll get a nice feedback of your breath, particularly if we have your thighs together. You're going to feel the front body, belly and rib cage expand, press down onto the leg. And that same expansion of breath will also happen in the back of the body. And one more breath. hands down at the outside of the legs. I'm going to use the arms to support the head, neck and shoulders up here and then we're going to come to lie down again. So you can be any way you want on your mat. We're just going to come to lie back down on our backs. A bit like we did at the start. We're going to bring those knees up into our chest and just wrap the arms around the shins, give it a little rock out. Good, holding the knees again, go for that same little circle. One way, and then the other way. And then our final little pose here is a reclining twist. This is lovely stretch for the hips, for the glutes and for the lower back. So we're going to begin by taking the right leg down flat to the floor. The left knee is at 90 degrees. The right hand is going to come onto that knee across to the other side. If you can, stretch the left arm out nice and wide. So the right arm is going to guide that left leg across to the right. Not coming so far that this opposite arm comes up off the floor. So try to keep the back of this left shoulder and arm down. You can begin to turn your head to look away. And then I'm going to encourage you to, to close your eyes here as well and really feel the breath. Feeling the breath expand up the body into the chest. It's a nice big breath. Like I said, you might feel a stretch into this left hip, although everyone's body is different. Nice twist for the spine as well. Come back into centre, bring that leg down, and we'll do the same on the other side. So the left leg is flat, the right knee is going to come to 90 degrees, left arm coming across to the outside, taking a twist over, right arm stays down. So don't pull this leg so far that the shoulder starts to come up, try to keep that back of the shoulder, back of the arm anchored down. Just a little bit of pressure on the leg. Again, I encourage you to close your eyes here. It gives you a deeper connection to your breath. Love. Great. 
bring it back to centre. Now we're going to extend that leg down straight. We're going to take a Shavasana here. It's our final resting pose of practice. However, some of you may not feel comfortable in this position. Awfully, if we, we are suffering with some just lower back little niggles, this position exacerbates it a little bit. It does pull the pelvis into more of that forward tilt. So if you're not feeling comfortable here, just bend your knees. Bring the soles of the feet down, that will place the pelvis in a more neutral position, allowing the lower back to feel a little bit nicer as well. Um, you could even take your feet a little bit wider and let your knees rest together. I'm going to say just choose whatever's feeling the best for your body in this moment in time. So let the arms uh, be by your side, palms turned to the sky. You don't want the arms too close in, it can cause the shoulders to rise up a little bit. So just take them a little bit away from the hips and try and allow the back of the shoulders to drop down into the mat. So whichever version of Shavasana you're choosing today, and we don't always need to choose the same one, I encourage you here to close your eyes, to allow the body to soften. And as the body comes to stillness, we are encouraging the mind to be still as well. That can be a little bit of a harder thing to do. So if the mind still feels busy, don't worry about it. But we can use our breath to anchor ourselves. So just begin to notice, first of all, the breath at the nostrils. The cool sensation of the breath as you breathe in on the inside of the nose. And the warmer sensation of the breath as you breathe out. We're not trying to change or control your breath here. Try to allow it to be totally natural. Following the gentle rise and fall of the belly button with each breath. Feeling good in our body, having taken a little bit of time for yourself today, a bit of time to just gently move and breathe, setting ourselves up for whatever comes next in our day. Our nervous system and mind thanking us for this little moment of stillness and this little moment of pause. invite you to stay here as long as you need to, as long as your body and mind require. 